It's been a bit since I've talked about ABA. It's a very complex subject and I didn't know how to explain myself for a long time, how to talk about this. I am back to talk about ABA once again and this time we're gonna be more gentle. We're gonna be more chill because I'm older now and I can do that. I think that I can explain some things. I think I can help. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a fan of ABA. ABA is kind of like bad parenting to me. It's like how a a bad parent is. (laughs) I'm like, oh, why would you do that? You don't, don't do that. (laughs) What are you doing? There are people, there are behaviorists that currently practice, right? And most people are in it to win it, right? Everyone is there because they want to be there, because they want to help, because they want to make a difference, because they want to make the field better, because they want, they seriously care. And that's freaking stunning. That's why I think it's freaking dope that we talk and I show you this, because I actually don't know if a lot of people would understand this. It's only because I'm autistic that this, that I get it, that I can give this perspective. I wanted to make sure that it was Uh, the good ABA. Because whenever I talked about ABA, people were like, that's when it's not used well, that's when it's not used right, and that's when it's not practiced well. Those are the bad behaviorists. We don't vibe with them. And I realized, oh man, I gotta get a good behaviorist to prove my point that behaviorism doesn't work and that ABA doesn't work, not just people suck. So, I found a video from Fathering Autism. Y'all heard of him? You probably have. He's got like a lot of subscribers. He's this guy and he has an autistic daughter named Abby and he showcases her life on there. I've done commentary on a video of his before, but that was when I was younger and these are different words. <laughs> this video was posted February 2022, so a year ago. So I'm like, hey, recent, recent. And the title is, must watch this ABA therapy video, dot, dot, dot. Just watch it, exclamation mark. And I'm looking at the, in the bio and the comments and everything are saying like, this is amazing. This is the best thing. Look at this amazing ABA therapy session. I'm a BCBA and this is why I do what I do. When they talk about ABA therapy, they need to watch this video so they really know what ABA therapy is like. That sounds like a video for me. So I watched it. I really hoped that I was proven wrong. I really wondered. I was very, very curious and open-minded and was like, yeah, this is going to be ABA done right. I can't wait to see it. I'm going to learn something. And I did not enjoy it at all at at any point. I need to explain why. When I say it, everyone will be like, oh, obviously. And I don't understand how this isn't common sense. As an autistic person, everything that I'm going to say is common sense to me. This is not to a lot of people, I guess. In general, I think I just have a problem with the way a lot of people teach. I'm a really good teacher, I feel. Is I just get frustrated at other people teaching. I'm like, you are a bad teacher. You're not teaching well. There's a lot of that going on here. In general, ABA does get autistic kids able to do a lot of things, a lot of tasks, more tasks, than they would have done before ABA. That's like kind of the the goal, the outcome, the ideal scenario. It's the way that it's done that doesn't vibe for me. I'm fully supportive of people doing things, but I'm not supportive of this. So I'm going to play this for you. I want to show you the clip and then I want to talk about that part of the clip and we're going to keep going back and forth like that. I want you to have your own judgment and experience without my input first on your thoughts and then I want to give my input. (laughs) I admit I don't know what I was doing before. I don't know why I said what I said. I can't really, I don't know her. I have new favorite scents from Native. I underrated a few scents that I need to highlight and rate them. Shout out to Native for sponsoring today's video. Thank you so much, Native. Girl, you know Native. Native makes daily staples like deodorant, body wash, hair care, lotion, toothpaste, skincare, and it's all vegan and cruelty-free. I'm talking about the deodorants, guys. They have 72-hour odor protection. Yum. And Native has a line that is 100% plastic-free. No plastic. How nice. So I used to be a big coconut and vanilla gal, and I'm like, like Paige, shake it up a little. So I instead got cucumber and mint. I got aloe and green tea, which is sensitive. And then I also got unscented. And these are my three favorites. (laughs) 
I really vibe with the unscented. I really vibe with it. I should have made the switch earlier. Like I should have recognized that my autism would have liked this. Native is always having new scents coming out and they have their fall line coming out. Everyone knows that fall is like the best smelling season. Your new fall scents from Native this fall. Ready? Drum roll please. <laughs> Vanilla and cactus flower, desert grass and sandalwood, honey sagaro. I should have Google translated, but I refuse. And then sage and sweet citrus. Ooh, fall! Smelly wellies. Go and hit them up. Hold on though, not without a promo code. Nay, nay. Usually three deodorants is $39, but you're gonna use my code layal 5 you will L-A-Y-L-E-5, and you'll get three plastic-free deodorants for $27, which is more than 33% off. So make sure you go and click the link down below in the description. Thank you so much once again, Nita, for partnering with me on today's video. Now we're gonna go watch another video and then cut back to me again. Something Priscilla and I've been talking about a lot lately is um, really work on developing these independent skills to where they're totally independent is this guy talking about his daughter in front of her they're talking about her like she's not in the room that's weird guys that's that's weird i'm just giggling i'm like that's so silly that anyone thinks that that's fine <laughs> this is actually a trend you'll see this a lot i i don't think that abigail's deaf she seems to be recognizing a lot of audible cues i don't know what this is I don't know. Your child's ears don't shut off when you're not talking to them. She still has ears. That's so gross. That's so disrespectful. No one else does that. No one else talks about their kid in the same room as them. Only autistic kids, apparently. Like, that's weird, okay? I'm not even gonna cut very much out of it because I want you guys to see it. It's so good. Um, but I didn't, but I wanted to explain what this card thing is. It's a visual representation that breaks aren't unlimited. Unlimited. What will happen a lot of times is we'll, um, we'll tell Abigail to do a task and she'll ask for a break, which is fine because we taught her to communicate that. Can I show you something? So whenever you want to, whenever you want to take a break, you can take one of these off and give it to me. However, it's become like a, you know, oh, but I, I can say break and you honor that because you were teaching me communication. Therefore, I just ask for break all the time and I'm supposed to get breaks. We want her to understand that it's not every time. It's not all the time. You have a limited amount of breaks. What? This is sending alarm bells to me and we're not even in, we're not even done a minute. What other child is not allowed to have breaks. What do you mean? Are you putting your child to work? They can only have like two 15 minute breaks and a half hour lunch by, that's what Ontario says. I don't understand this. Breaks from what? Breaks from what? And why are they limited? This is so, she sees that they are not unlimited. That's scary. That's spooky. That's weird. That's fucking weird. What if she needs more? She probably needs more. <laughs> and then they're gonna have to go, nope. You've used all your breaks. You have no more breaks left. You have to do the thing. What thing does your daughter have to do? What thing does your daughter have to do that she cannot take a break for? Why can't you take a fucking break? After everything, unlimited breaks. What, does she have a job? She does not have things to do. She does not have any obligations. She should be able to take as many breaks as she wants. Ew. Why do parents think like this? Autistic people don't think no. Please, parents, stop thinking that your kid is manipulative. If your kid is like, oh, I can just ask, keep asking for breaks and I'll keep getting breaks because that's what you taught me, your kid might need some more breaks. Like, why are you being like, you can't have more breaks? That's so wild. And gas, I honestly think that this is like a type of gaslighting. That's so scary and upsetting. And I would feel in such lack of control if my father thought that of me and was like, ha, now you have limited breaks because doesn't matter how uncomfortable you are, you have to keep doing whatever is going to keep happening, I guess. That is apparently really fucking important. It's not, by the way. It's not. It's just ABA therapy. That's the thing. Ways do it without any prompting at all. Yeah. You, you know, because we know she's capable. It's yeah. Just a, it's a motivation. Yeah, removing prompts and then 
being able to remove ourselves as far as proximity and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Here they all are again, just talking about her like she's not in the room. That's so strange. She can hear everything that you're saying. Are these words she doesn't understand? Nope. They are speaking the same language that she understands. Everyone's speaking English. Abigail can hear everything you're saying. You'd feel like a freaking test subject. Like, I guess everything I do, my mom and dad are just gonna literally write down in a journal and talk about over there. Fuck, that's so uncomfortable. Did you want to take a break or uh, get a snack? It gets you all hyped up though. You need to take it off your ear. It's a little too much. Yeah, we were hyped all last night. She was listening to a toy and simming. It looked like she was happy and excited. It looked like she was having a good time. That made me sad because she looked like she was happy. And it seemed like the hyped upness, the too much of hyped up means like you're too much, you're, you are too much to handle when you are super duper happy. So I would like you to get less happy so that you don't move around as much so that you're easier for me to handle and also talk about with my wife in the kitchen. And then she puts it down. That's so sad. She can't even have one minute to actually be authentically happy. She's in a different room and her dad's still like, no, you are too happy and excited right now. She's literally just standing in one place. He's like, that's too much, too hype. I don't think that she was doing anything wrong. Also, it's not like she has a job. It's not like she has stuff she has to do. Why is she not allowed to just be an autistic person and exist and learn things and do whatever she wants to do? So then we get into the ABA therapy session, which is the therapist working with Abby also, the dad is here, and he's standing, watching, staring at them, also with a camera. As soon as you are recording a therapy session, it no longer becomes authentic. It's not, it's not as authentic as it needs to be in order to be a sufficient session in therapy. The fact that they are posting anything about Abby and stuff that she does already I, I don't think is okay. I think it's exploitative and not fair. I think filming their therapy sessions is fucking weird. Uh, fucking weird and posting them. He's a kid too, come on. Also, your parent just standing there watching is very, very fucking weird for any therapy session in, in general. This doesn't exclude autistic people. Personally, I think that my dad watching me while I'm trying to do something is weird. And then him trying to come in and talk and interject and do stuff. That's. That's not going to be weird. Should we do timers, like audible timers? Yeah, we could do a timer if I was thinking that too. They got to talk about her again. Like she doesn't know what those words are. Like she doesn't, like she didn't hear what you're saying. And she just puts the pillow on her. Abigail's sitting there knowing what's going on, knowing that it's a therapy session. She knows that it has a start time and an end time. She knows that there's like, this is a specific part of her life, time of her life where these things happen, where this girl sits here and my dad stands here and he has a camera and then they touch me a bunch. She's been having ABA therapy for years. She's very well aware of what this whole thing is. And also <laughs> that it's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> that it's literally some gal, like some Jennifer, trying to make me do stuff. It doesn't make sense. That's the base of it. It's not important. If my therapist or my dad were doing the same thing, I'd be like, why? Why? Seriously, what a good question. Why are we doing this? One minute timer. Should we set a timer? I don't know. Should we set a timer? Like, I can hear you talking. You could just say one minute. And then chillax for a minute. A minute is a, 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 an allotted amount of time that she could conceptualize. A timer doesn't matter. The purpose of a timer, I imagine, is so when the alarm goes off, you go like, ah, the alarm, that is a thing. That is not me telling you that we have to go. That is another thing, external thing saying that you have to go. Which again, making demands <laughs> for autistic kids. It's like, I'm, I'm only two minutes in. It's just the purpose of ABA, guys. It's like you don't even understand autistic people at all. That's the point. It's like, it has nothing to do with autism. Where are the autism accommodations? It's like you're talking to a baby who does not understand, comprehend language. Abigail does. Autistic people do. And I bet she's sitting there like, okay, you fucking weirdos, they're worrying about setting a timer. And then they're like, okay, timer's done. Blah, 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 blah. They're stressing. For what, guys? You're stressing for literally nothing because this is ABA therapy. You're literally in charge. You are literally calling the shots and controlling every single thing. So why are you stressing? I need you to come put your clothes in the hamper. Why right now? Why don't we 
put my genes away as soon as we need to, as soon as I take them off my body. That would make sense and also teach habits and chaining. And so she doesn't have to remember later on to go put her genes away. She remembers, I put my genes away as soon as I take them off my body. That would be something that I would teach my autistic kid. I wouldn't do this. <laughs> this doesn't make any fucking sense. Guys, literally, I don't know. I just think that this, I just feel like it's common sense, but apparently it's not. For autistic kids, we're like, okay, I noticed that you want me to do that right now. And that seems very important to you right now. I don't see the significance of doing it right now. Abby's comfortably sitting on the couch. She knows that she's probably going to come back to the couch after, probably. She's like, can we just do it later? Autistic people don't like transitions. Doing the least amount of transitions as possible would be dope. Separating the steps of putting the genes away like this is silly and just not effective. I don't understand. She's not being defiant. She's just smarter than you. And she's like, no, like this doesn't make sense. Put your pants mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Let's put your pants away. Mm. You need to put your pants mm. in the laundry. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I could say this throughout the entire thing, and so I'm just going to say it now. Do not touch autistic people. Do not touch autistic children. Don't fucking touch them. The anger, the utter, the I'm so... Mm -hmm. I'm infuriated. I am infuriated at how much everyone touches Abby. You don't touch any other child like this. No teacher touches any other kid like this. No person touches any other person like this. I've had people try to touch me like this every single time I said, don't fucking touch me. I've been able to say that. Do people not know what autism is? Anything about autism? It hurts when you touch autistic people. Do that as little times as possible. I'm a dance teacher and I don't even touch my dance kids without their consent and only if, I lit if I'm aligning them or needing to do something. I have two-year-olds in my dance class and you won't even see me like grab them or try to corral them or any like with my hands or with my I don't need to because I'm a really good teacher and they listen to me I know them they know me we've set up we've set the tone and if I need to I can use my body like to if I'm like you're not leaving the studio I can put my body in front of them I've never had to touch a kid and these people never have to touch Abigail but they just do they just do for what for what? Ask me why any of this is necessary. It's not. Like, who cares about your authority? Not me. Abigail knows that. You're like, you're literally some nobody. Put your pants away. You're in my home telling me to put my pants away. You, you put my fucking pants away. If you want them so bad, what are we doing? This is why ABA doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Autistic people are not defying you. We don't get what you're doing. You could do this in so much better ways. Do you need a break? Hey, do you need a break? Okay, sure. Give me one. Cool, you can take a break. And I think when you're when you're doing this, you're not going to necessarily set a timer. So let's like walk Just, away, like totally yeah. show her she's on a break. We're not following through with that right now. This is the illusion of choice. Look, she has the option for a break. You see how the, like, the question that the BCBA was asking was a baiting question. Do you wanna do this? You can break if you want to. You can break. You know that you can have a break if you want to. So those are your two choices. Having control over an autistic person doesn't work. It doesn't work in our heads. We don't care. We don't care. You are nobody. Who are you? This is not a rule. This is not a law. This is not a whatever. You are just a person literally manipulating me. And I think like a lot of us know and she knows I have to end up doing this fucking thing or else Brenda here or whoever her name is isn't going to leave. She knows that there is a, an end to an ABA therapy session and knows that she needs to accomplish XYZ in order to be able to get out of it. So that's the other problem. She knows that she can only break so many times that she has to do the stuff that she doesn't want to do and doesn't understand why the fuck it needs to happen 
and also is autistic. So all of do it, all of it is very hard. If this were more organized so that it made sense, it would make sense. And also if they let her be more independent, it would make sense. It's the illusion of autonomy. There is no independence. There is no choice. I wonder what choices she would make if she could make them. And again, going back to talking to like she's not in the room. Oh my god, let's let's talk about her progress right now. Imagine par imagine having parent teacher meetings all the time, every day, but not about schoolwork, about your life. They're in your house, and your dad is watching you do your your work all the time. And then they're like, "Yeah, I didn't really like how she did that." Fuck, that's a horrible situation to be in. Just think about it. I don't know. I feel like that's common sense. Has any, have you guys thought about being in this position and does it make any fucking sense? Can you please tell me? She's probably like, oh my God, these people, what are they doing? So then you're gonna sit down and you're gonna like kind of walk away. It's like she is trying to train Abby's dad on how to like be around Abby, which is hilarious to hear as an autistic person. Your parent doesn't know what to do with you and is being trained right in front of you. To hear that, oh man, you really... That's really scary. That sucks that you don't know how how to me. And also, that doesn't make me respect you and your authority anymore. That makes me undermine you and your authority. That makes me disrespect you, Mary. Dad has no idea what to do with me and how to talk to me and how to act with me and how I am as a person, but then tries to tell me to put on my shoes 50 times. Dad, you're literally dumb. Like, you actually are dumb. It's time to go put your pants away. Got it? Am I your way? <sighs> nice listening, Ab. And she knows where they go, so. Yeah, so that's cool. So she's still got all that talk and she might figure out this process anyway. Literally like a test subject. They, she touches her so fucking much. You see how this time she's like, time to put your pants away. Abigail immediately jumps up because she knows there are no other options. I have limited breaks. They are not letting me out of this. I have to. And now she's had these this minute or whatever break to prepare herself for the transition that she is about to make from the couch to getting up and doing all this stuff and moving around. Blah, blah, blah. Transitions are hard and you're sitting on a comfy couch and you're autistic. Ugh, it's hard. OK, having a minute to be like, this is what we are going to do next and being able to digest it is dope. And let's not rush it. I understand that you are paying this ABA therapist. Have endless amount of time. Your daughter doesn't need to put her clothes away in three minutes. Does she? Can she take five minutes? Can she take 10 minutes? How about 20? Does she have anything else she needs to do? Actually, apparently she does. She has lots of tasks. And that's another thing that just doesn't make sense about ABA. It's so task-based and task-focused and doing stuff-based. It's like if capitalism, capitalism met junior kindergarten. That's what this is. And that's not what ABA therapy should be. That's not what autism therapy should be at all. This doesn't make sense. And then she's like, she's like, come on, go put your clothes away. Abigail's like, you're in my way, Barbara. She's like, come on, touches her, like move. I would have thrown hands. I actually think I actually, if that happened to me and if she touched me, I have big touch aversion. Like if someone touches me, I'm actually like, I freak out. Don't touch me. Don't fucking touch me. And so if she were to do that, because she, and she's like come on let's go but she was standing in my way i probably would have like clocked her just because that's so, that, like it makes me so angry to think about <sighs> and so and and i'm just me and i'm just me over here on the internet like i'm watching and this is how angry i am i can imagine this is how angry abigail once was but this has been years and years and years and so that anger would go away and you hear how it's like nice listening nice listening where else are we saying nice listening to kids. Is that what we want to do? Good listening isn't a trait that we want to establish. If the point is to make an autistic person independent, then do not congratulate them for complying with your demands. If the purpose is to make an autistic person independent, then don't tell them what to do and then say, thank you, good listening, when they do it. That's not independence. Then they're like, look, she did it by herself. Yeah, because you told her to. Wow, she can do it by herself. But would she in the real life, in the wild? No, because she doesn't have her own motivation to do it. The only time she needs to are when you make her because you want her to. For my kids at dance, I don't say good listening. I, 
I'll say like, thank you for listening or I appreciate your attention. That's really respectful. I don't even say like, good job to my kids because their job is not to do what I think is good. My job is to nurture them in whatever dancer that they are. As parents should also think about their kids, I feel like this is common sense. When my kids do something, when they even when they improve on something, they get excited. And I look at them and I'm like, oh my, how do you feel? What happened? What did you, like, what did you do differently? How did that feel? And then they tell me and then they go, oh, and I just did this and I, this has been working. Like, look at you, you've been practicing. That's great. That's just general. That's just general, like, teaching and being a good teacher, I think. This is poor teaching. This is stupid teaching. This doesn't make sense. This is teaching how to have her be able to do ABA therapy for the rest of her life. Autistic brains are specific. And so this scenario, she knows. We know this scenario doesn't exist in the real life. It just is going to be dad and mom replicating it. Doesn't exist in the real life. It only exists for mom and dad, you know? We are aware of this. If you want to teach independence, teach independence. This is not independence. This isn't independence. Let's put this, rinse that. Mm. Let's put it in the dishwasher. Mm. Mm. I just don't want you to dump it on yourself. There you go. What do we need to do here? You figure that out? Nice. Look at you. I like it. I like it. Where does this fork go? Doesn't that go up here? Mm. No, you're right. That's right. The micromanaging is not helpful at all. She knows what words are. This is even basic like dog training. <laughs> You're training a dog, you say a command once because if you say the command a billion times, then they might get used to, oh, I do the command after they say it a billion times or let's see how many times they're gonna say it before I actually have to do it. So even in dog training, you don't talk to dogs like this. <laughs> if anyone talked to me like this, I'd be like, shut the fuck, I got it, Mary. Give me a minute. Can everyone stop touching me and crowding around me? I know what a dishwasher is. I know what a fork is. I know how to do things. It's just gonna take me a minute because I'm autistic and got some different things going on than you. So fucking chillax. You guys all want me to do this random dishwasher thing that I don't need to do. You know, like I, ugh. and just tell me once she's not deaf. She heard you. Saying it more times is not going to make her hear you anymore, understand you anymore. It's just going to make her be like, wow, you really don't know how to communicate, do you? Yes, I know what a shoe is. Yes, I know what a dishwasher is. Yes, I know what put there means. I think that kids should fuck up and be allowed to and encouraged to. I don't think that the dad had any right to interfere here because I think three things would have happened. One, Abby would have noticed that there was a lot of water and that she had to dump it out first. Two, her dad could say something and just say like, oh, that's pretty full with water. Oh, that cup's pretty full. It might need to be emptied out before it goes in the dishwasher instead of just grabbing it and doing it. Or three, she puts it in the dishwasher with all the water in it and it makes a little bit of a mess. And then what? Then she learns that when that happens, oh, that's what happens. X, Y, now that is something that she learned by herself. My dance kids will mess up and they will tumble. I will have little kids take really big falls in dance or they will just slip because kids are clumsy and they run into each other. And every time they're so cute, they look back at me like, oh, what's, what's Miss Paige gonna do? And every time I go, oh, good wipeout, take a minute. And they're like, okay. And I have not had one child cry from an injury. I've had some begin to, which is totally fine. I'm like, you are allowed to, yes, falling hurts. Yes, you fell and it hurt. Take a minute and you can rejoin us when you feel like you're okay. Let kids learn. Let kids learn that when they step like this, they're going to slip or when they're not looking, they're going to run into somebody and biff, as long as they're not in danger, a little water is in danger. You could even be like, hey, could you help me clean up this water? This is how we clean up spills. Messes are okay. Messes are a part of life. This is how we clean up spills. That was a missed opportunity. This is again, <laughs> this doesn't make fucking sense. So we were just throwing stuff in there. Yeah. Now she's actually thinking yeah. about how it goes. Hey, so that's you a did huge two step. Well, you want to ask her to do something else? Yeah. Okay, Dad's got one more thing for you. Can you come help me vacuum? Can you come help me vacuum? What's up? Oh, you need a break? You've got one left. Give it to Dad. Cool. There you go. Go, go take, take a, break. a break. Car ride. A car ride? You want to go somewhere? Cart ride. You want to go on a cart ride?
Okay, let's vacuum first, then we'll go on a cart ride, okay? Cart ride. <laughs> Alright, let's go vacuum. So slide that over to her so she sees there's not a lot also. We're gonna we're gonna go vacuum, okay? Yep. Look. Ah. Your brakes are all gone. See? Your brakes are all gone. That means it's time to go vacuum and then you can go on a cart ride. Okay? I'll get it. I was really curious when I saw like them talking about vacuuming, vacuuming. I can't wait to see, are there any accommodations for her? I don't even vacuum without earplugs. And so I'm like freaking hoping that they're not gonna make her vacuum without earplugs. They're not going to make an autistic person vacuum without any autistic accommodations at all, are they? Are they? They aren't. This is wild. This is unbelievable. Where is there any knowledge of autism here? Notice how she took away her iPad after uh, Abby wasn't paying attention or whatever. That's not okay. That is her communication tool. That is what she's using to talk to them. No one has the right to take that away from her. When I'm not listening or paying attention to someone, they can't just snatch my vocal cords so that I can't talk anymore and that I pay attention to them. That's a power dynamic struggle that's 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 scary that's not an okay power dynamic to have that's not an okay thing to do to your kid no other parent has that power to take away their child's voice from them that's not okay you only get to do that because she doesn't speak and that's fucking and that's and that pisses me off that's 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 literally taking advantage of her because she can't speak having that like taking a that's so fucked that's so fucked and then no accommodations for the vacuum and she gets and she gets worked up she gets louder she's stimming more of course she is vacuums are loud vacuums are loud she's autistic i really wanted to make like a serious calm video i really wanted to be like in formal and stuff i'm on fire i'm sorry i'm on fire i'm so frustrated like, the entire basis is so demeaning and takes away every part of autonomy so that it doesn't make any sense and we know that we know she knows this doesn't make sense she knows that she's trapped she knows she has to vacuum she knows and she knows the consequences like she literally got her voice taken away from her and like you have to vacuum you have to do this thing that you hate why do you think she's procrastinating vacuuming vacuuming sucks i also hate vacuuming with no protective ear gear at all Come to think of it, the only accommodation I've seen thus far for this gal is that she has AAC. Thank the fucking Lord, but it all of a sudden just came up here five and a half minutes in. That's the only accommodation that you'll see. They're so annoying. Listening, nice listening. Good job listening. Quit praising kids for their listening, okay? We're trying to build independent people, right? So let's build independent people and not praise them for being literally the opposite of independent. That is the only thing that makes sense. Okay, right, right? Hold the bottom part over. Pull the bottom part. Pull it. This way. Short ride. Come on, put your shoes on. Let's go party. Oh, come on. We're in there. There we go. Pull it. Pull it, Abby. Pull it this way. Keep pull. Pull it. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. She knows. She can hear you. That's not helpful. You are being a bad teacher right now. And also, like, a helicopter dad. Let your kid do stuff. It's okay to take a minute. Have some patience there, dad. If she's defying you or not doing it, ask yourself why. Don't rush it and then be like, come on, do it, pull it, pull it, keep going, this is why you do it. Well, have some patience. You don't need to get inside right now. You're just being a turd. How about take a minute to understand like your daughter's thought process. Car rides are great. They're very good for our vestibular motion system. We like car rides, yeah. What we don't like, transitions. So going from a place to another place, going in between events or activities, and also parties. But no one seems to be aware of that. Shoes up. Shoes on. Put shoes on. She's not wearing shoes because shoes are uncomfortable. 
straight up. Socks, shoes, they can be very uncomfortable. They can feel all of the seams on your sock and your toes can feel very squished and smushed together and that can be very uncomfortable. It's very common for autistic people to like to go barefoot. Apparently not for this dad. Apparently this dad doesn't know that. I would go, why doesn't she like the shoes that she has? Can we get her shoes that she likes? Why doesn't she like the shoes? Why does she like to go barefoot? Also, is this a sit? Can she go barefoot? Americans are weird. Put your shoes on. Say shoes again. No, she didn't hear you the first time. I think she would honestly understand if you said shoes one more time. Call me elf one more time. You're an elf. These are easy things to accommodate and change and they're well-known autism things. You wanna come eat? Okay. Is it, it's a comfy couch, huh? It's a great couch. We're, we're gonna eat and then we'll come over there, okay? Look at this wonderful food. I know, Crystal did so good. Yeah. Parties are overwhelming. I'm sure it's a comfortable couch, but I'm also sure that everybody is talking and not to her. Everyone just talks about her or gives her commands. I hate this place too. Also, it's loud. And food. Autistic people have problems with food. This is so well known too. If this were me, I'd say, hey, you and I should go and look at what food is here and we can go and see, we can make ourselves a plate and see what here you like and want to eat. And then I'd go together with you because the social dynamic of doing that by yourself doesn't exist <laughs> especially in this case especially with her she can't do one thing by her fucking self without her parents telling her it's the wrong way to do things Mikado, do not. going to a place for dinner with your autistic person you should also brief that person on what's going on who's going to be there what so he knows it's a birthday party for who what's the purpose what kind of food are is there going to be there how many people these are all make transitions easier and also it's good to prepare <laughs> but if there's no food there that abby could eat Eat. You should be aware of that and ready for that and able to bring food for her if need be. Making her own plate herself, does she know that she can and will? If you haven't ABA'd her on how to get her own plate from this house, she's not she's not gonna do it. You gotta say something. You gotta talk to your daughter. No one's talking to you about your thoughts and your feelings and your opinions and your values and what you care about. People are just talking to you about what they're doing next and bringing you along for. There's zero autism accommodations here. There's like zero knowledge of autism here. Got over your nervousness, yeah. huh? She did. She wasn't nervous. Do y'all think she was nervous? I didn't think she looked nervous. I think she looked autistic. This dad is so misguided. I don't get it. Mad about going to their house. Mad about coming home. I swear, oh, don't yell at me. I swear. And people wonder why we did an 8,000 mile trip. Go all the way to the back. Take your shoes off. Good job. Let's go. The foot stomp and everything. Sometimes you're just mad, you know? You're doing a fantastic job. Here's your iPad. Here. Transitions are hard because going from place to place is hard. Yes, a car ride forever and ever and ever would be great because that means that there's no change. <laughs> it's just constant vestibular motion. How do we make transitions easier? That's what we should be focusing on. And there are lots of ways to, to do that. Talk to your kids. Talk to them. Say what's going on. What you're doing next. What the plan is. Why? Why are we doing things? Talk to your kids. Abby's going to have way more of a chill time if she can prepare like okay we're going for a car ride for 10 minutes and then because after we're going to this place and we are going to do this 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 cool now she knows this car ride i'm not going to get too super comfortable because i'm only here for 10 minutes and i know that the car ride isn't the purpose we are going to a location a destination and i'm preparing for that and this is my moment to be able to get ready for that <laughs> and be ready for whatever that's gonna be, including my dad's gonna make me put on fucking clothes, toe, and trapping shoes. There's no need to speed up. Chillax, go slow, take your time. Stop and smell the roses, enjoy the flowers, my dude. Your autistic kid? Have some patience, man. It's all about getting things done and, and being productive and doing tasks. And that type of therapy doesn't make sense to me. I understand what ABA thinks it's doing. And ABA, you can do that in not this way, please. It's just a weird system of ABA. ABA is just this weird system that exists only within itself. It doesn't work for the world. It doesn't work. ABA is only its little ball and autistic people know that autistic people feel that she can never just exist and just like be she's always got to do stuff that she doesn't have to do 
It's just for the sake of doing stuff so they can feel good that they taught her how to do a thing. Teach her how to do different things than that. Are you actually going to have her live alone and so she needs to know how to put her jeans in the dish in the laundry machine? Like what are the important things for your kid? Guys, I think like honestly when I have kids, I'm not even, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to post about it. I'm not going to show my kid's face anywhere because the internet is a terrifying place. And also, I think it's fucking weird. I think filming your kid on the internet is weird. I remember being a kid who my mom did do that. And I would get very mad, very upset with my mom. And it put a big rift between my mom and I. Because anytime she wanted to like complain or something, she'd go on Facebook and, oh my God, page blah, blah, blah. And I got Facebook. And I was like, mom. I'm a human person that also is going to have independent relationships with these people. Please do not put a preconceived notion of me in anyone's head. Let me be able to speak for myself and have my own thoughts and opinions represent myself and my feelings, not whatever this is, what you're doing. And I think that this is just so exploitative and he, that it's so misguided. It's like, yay, she's doing stuff doing independent stuff. Autistic kids need to learn how to live independently, which means creating systems in their head that work, that make sense to them, not you telling them to do a thing because you fucking said so and they have no breaks so they can't say no and you're in charge for what reason because you're just some random ABA person. Autistic people don't value authority like you do. Like it doesn't make sense. It's just ABA. So I, I hope that that shed some light on some of my inner thoughts and feelings about ABA. Autistic kids can hear you, can't they? If they're not deaf? I believe so. Let them fuck up. Let the water spill on the floor, Mary. It's just water. Messes are okay. Messes are going to happen. Messes need to be learned like that they can be cleaned up and how that happens and that it's okay. Autistic kids need to learn about transitions and how we can do them the most effectively and safely. Autistic kids need to learn to listen to their bodies and know when something is uncomfortable or something needs to change or that they need to shower and they need to, we need to get to a place where that autistic kid wants to shower where we have now come to an agreement like this is what showering is this is why we shower i know that showering is so uncomfortable it's so sensory it's loud it hurts like it's constant it's very intimate and showering does suck yes but if we don't shower what happens here are the consequences of not showering okay now showering makes a lot of sense yes it sucks but now it makes sense now i understand why we shower. That doesn't mean showering sucks any less, but that means that I am more okay with showering now that I know that it has a significant and important purpose, that I know that my suffering is necessary for my survival here, that I know that now I need to learn how to accommodate myself so that I can shower the most easily, so that I want to shower as frequently as possible. That is what we should be teaching autistic kids, not go take a shower, go do this, go do this, 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 good job, here's a gold fucking star. <sighs> okay, cool. What are your thoughts and feelings and opinions? How do you feel now that you've seen that and my thoughts and feelings and opinions? And I would love to hear from BCBAs. Oh, and so would Macy. Macy, do you have anything that you would like to say? Oh, thank you for the kisses. Kisses from the missus. Macy, if you could say something to the fans, what would you say? Oh, really? Well, would you want to go outside? Is this interview done now? This is the end of the video song. This video is to tell you the video's done. If you're hearing this, it's because the video's done. Go watch another one. Boop, boop. Have a good day. Love you so much. Bye.